Hey folks, George Shively, South Shore Marine Electronics. I just wanted to point out something uh, on a boat that I'm working on here, which I see all too often, and that is really poor wiring. And many times the owner will never know that this type of thing exists. Uh, they may know they have a problem, but they have no idea where it is. And this is something I want to show you and uh, point out on this boat because I see it all the time, and it's just it's wrong, and it, and it tells me the quality of workmanship that has been done, um, not by the manufacturer, but by um, people who have been working on the boat prior to myself. Uh, what we're doing on this boat is putting on a satellite TV system, uh, actually a KVHM1, which you can see right there. This is a, um, a silver tin with the traditional hammer head. We worked on this boat, I think it's a 372. Um, worked on this boat last year, put on a new Garmin 5212, um, as well as uh, a new VHF radio, integrated that. Uh, into uh, NEMA 183 for DSC and MMSI capability. Covered up the uh, all the holes that were created by the old um, um, R20 series uh, Ray Marine, or Raytheon equipment. Um, and uh, this year we're going ahead and putting on uh, satellite TV antenna. And if you look very closely right behind the satellite TV antenna, you'll see a little mount with some black cable. That is a backing camera where if I go back here and take a peek up you can see that there is now a backing camera over top of the stern light which will enable the um, operator of the boat to see the stern because this boat is difficult to see from the from the helm when you're sitting up here at the helm you really can't you know if you look back you really can't see the stern very well it's 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 really blocked so having a backing camera will really facilitate seeing that uh, tying that into the Garmin for video input. But let me show you here why I originally made this little video here. Um, usually I do the long drawn out videos, but we're going to take a real short one here just for the moment. Here we are inside the electrical panel, and I'm going ahead and removing the this device right here, which is the amplifier for the terrestrial antenna, uh, TV antenna. And I didn't notice this really until I started clipping wire ties, but here is the wire, the red wire that I have in my hand here. There is a butt connection here. Then you have another butt connector there, a fuse holder, another butt connector, another butt connector, finally going into the connector that plugs into the top of the uh, terrestrial TV antenna uh, amplifier. So that's one, two, three, four butt connectors on a, a wire here that's probably not three feet long. That's just wrong. Um, if you do have to use butt connectors, you certainly don't use the type that are not the the uh, heat shrinkable type. That's number one. They do cost more and they take about three seconds longer to put on. Um, but it's just it's just poor workmanship, and this is the kind of thing that you can have a, a connection here, and this will fail, and you don't know why, and it looks good, and it's it's just a real pain. So I just want to bring this to your attention and kind of show you what not to do on a boat, and and these are the kind of little things that many times the owner doesn't see, um, but uh, can really pose a problem down the road. So anyway, that's it. Um, George Shively, South Shore Marine Electronics, as always, 216-407-6553, and uh, our email is southshoremarineelectronics at oh.rr.com. Bad butt connectors. Take care.